Listen, listen, listen. Big Al, let me, you know, everybody, just because I'm big, they think I want to eat all the time. You know. Listen, Big Al, let me and my wife take you out for dinner and lunch or something. And I said to him, I said, I said Brother Ladig and Larry, I said, I appreciate you so much. I said, the well, first lady has already bought lunch. Val has already bought lunch in. And I thank God for First Lady and Val, amen, today to help me through getting some things done in the city, amen. And, but I, I, I tell you, I had another call that blessed me because she wanted to cook me a home cooked meal. Amen. And that's the lovely mother, Elaine Blake, and thank God for her and her husband, amen. And just for the people that extend love. You know, it's a great thing when people call you and you ain't thinking about them. They just call to say, I'm thinking about you. Amen. And it's good, amen, to be thinking somebody thinking about you. I'm so excited about this revival and this opportunity to share. I, I, I don't know. I know people have been preaching for 30, 40 plus years. But there's something that gets down in the center of your belly, the nervous excitement of whatever it is. Because I understand me within myself, Al Brandon, is no good. Y'all ain't saying much to me tonight, but I'm going to see you until y'all talk to me a little while. And I understand something that the arms of flesh, including my own arms, will fail me. But the truth of the matter, when the Spirit of the Lord shows up, I can make all of my past lives. So when the lady got up to sing the song, she wasn't just singing to y'all. It didn't matter what key she was in, what 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 uh, uh, melody she was what, trying to, to do. The thing was the words of what she was saying. Yes, sir. She said, "When I think of the goodness of Jesus, <laughs> I feel like right there." Amen. Glory to God. I don't know about you and what you come to do, but I come to bless him today. And I don't intend to be to you before you very long, but there is a word in the house where really. I enjoyed every testimony today because I realized something that there is power in your testimony. Because sometimes God will impress upon you to share some things out of your testimony that you won't pick up the phone and call somebody into. And the Bible lets us know that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And the words of our testimonies. Ah. So you shouldn't be afraid to talk about how God has delivered you right. from out of whatever you've been in bondage to. The testimony of deliverance should be something to keep pushing you forward. Ah. Glory to God. Amen. I, I thought about it when the first lady was saying wonderful introduction, but it's just so much, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm thinking, you know, who is all this she's talking about, you know? But I'm thinking when she talked about how the Lord had delivered me, amen, even from cancer in 94. The doctor said to me in April, said that that same year, said that the cancer was eating so fast in my body that I probably wouldn't live to see uh, Christmas of 94. Ah. But all I got to tell you is I'm still here. Come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I get a check every year to prove that everything is all gone and there's no sign of reappearances. The doctor told me a couple years ago, said, don't come back for about three years till you get to go. I say God stamped the level of approval on me. Glory to God. New Year's night, I was coming home from night watch service. And a truck pulled out in front of me, a drunk driver pulled out in front of me. And I'm telling you, I experienced something in pain and shock that I'd never experienced before. And I thought about it. I said, wow, this is twice what the devil has tried. It's all right. Oh, y'all ain't with me today. Come on. But I thank God yeah. for saving me. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I only have looked like about 20 minutes, so let me hear you. Get your Bible tonight. I know this is a work night for some of you. And, and, and tomorrow is a work day. I don't want to make you glad twice. Glad to see you coming. I'm glad to see you coming. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm going to ask you, man, if you turn. Uh, to the book of Ecclesiastes, because I believe something today that if I'm able to encourage you today, 
to fight for tomorrow and you fight the next day for the next day that we can win this battle of discouragement and depression. See, we really don't take very well to that, especially in the African-American community. But there is a level of pressure that can get on you and lock itself on you until you get yourself in a bind, till you can't even find help for your own self. But I come today to encourage your heart. Those of you that are looking for uh, Ecclesiastes is best place of Proverbs. I know, you know, if you're struggling a little bit, look in the front and get the picture number. Don't be so, don't try to fake it, you know. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So this is an outdoor meeting, so I don't have to be so technical as if I was in your church. I can just have a good time tonight. And then I'm home on top of that. Amen. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And I want to talk about a little bit today in the first eight verses. And I'm going to ask you, man, today, that you read along with me. I'm going to drop out after I get you started and get you around the verses of the Lord, verse 8, and then I'll come back to the Lord, the Lord said to the Lord. Do you have it? Amen. Well, by reference to the Word of God, if you do or don't have it, just stand for the Word of God. To everything there is a season, and to a time, and to every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down. A time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow. Time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate. A time, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time to, uh, for war, and a time of peace. I'm going to lift from the very first verse tonight, amen, of the same chapter, and, and I want to talk about for a little while. Don't miss your season. Ah, glory. Before you sit down, I want you to grab hands of that one that's sitting beside you. I know y'all been working all day and y'all think I've been in the hotel all day. I want to pray, amen, for Sister Diane. I think I talked to somebody today. And for Mother Jones from... Um, what Mount Moran, I believe it is. Amen. Is there anybody else that, that we miss, First Lady? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today for the word, for we know your word to be true. We thank you, God, because you have blessed us and you have made way for us and you have opened doors that man can't get credit for. Father, we thank you today for what you're going to do and what you've already done. But God, we pray that you would bless us alone. Have mercy, God, and hide me behind the cross that they won't see me but all of you. God, I pray for divine glory, healing, and deliverance tonight. Father, I pray somebody at home may be able to experience this message through one of these verses and through one of these CDs or tapes, God, and still feel the anointing of your power and your glory. Father, I pray for the hands that you're holding today. Glory to God, because you're holding the hand of a miracle. Somebody didn't know where their next meal was coming from, but God delivered and God opened doors. We thank you, God, for being a doctor in the city. Father, we thank you for being a lawyer in the courtroom today, God. Lord, we pray your divine deliverance and your healing 
to recognize that when the Lord has favored us and blessed us and he's granted great mercy towards us, we must be very careful of the people that are around us. Come because on. the truth of the matter of it is we can get in with the wrong crowd right. and get distracted and misinfluenced and miss that which God has... Ah, go ahead. Y'all gonna have to help me a little bit tonight. Come on, come on. But the truth of the matter of it is I realize that who I hang around and associate with is important. I don't care if they become haters because one thing about haters you can recognize when they see the hand of the Lord on you. Come on. They will distance themselves from you. So you don't have to worry about the haters tonight. Sometimes, thanks to the Most High God, go through so much. All right. Until they're so stressed that they get to the level of oppression. Come on. And depression. Yeah. The truth of the matter about it, right now, buying gas is a life experience decision. Fix <laughs> it. We're going to push it a little while, but I just want to talk for a little bit right now. When you pull up to the gas station, depending on what your car demands, whether it's regular or the medium grade or, God forbid, high test or diesel, come on, and you have to make a decision whether I'm going to spend four, 40 to 50 to 60 in my truck, it costs me almost $90 Go ahead. to fill up. There was a time that my daddy didn't make much more than ninety dollars a week. Praise God! Come on. So these are decisions that we are embarking upon that we have to make because they're critical, not for where we are, but for where we are going. Come on, come on. And the one thing that you have to ultimately understand about destiny, and when there's a season of fulfillment of destiny, you have to do like. The book of Psalms talk about making your steps and your election very sure. Yeah, yeah. Because in this hour, we cannot afford a whole lot of setbacks now. Come on. Our steps have to be into a positive direction. Go ahead. God is also teaching me how to cut some things and cut back on some things, and He's teaching me to cut some people too. Why? Why? I'm glad you asked. Because if they're not going where you're going, Come on. they can be a hindrance to you. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard the preacher last night talk about when he got to the point where he would stop drinking and stop shooting up and stop getting home. The people that were supposed to be his friends just kind of backed up off of him a bit. All right. But that's all right because if you got a plan, and you understand that you're working in a time that's critical to a season. You're not very well concerned about what people think about you. The Bible says uh, in verse 2, it says a time to, to embrace. Yeah, yeah. And to hook up. And to connect. 
And then it says a time to refrain yeah. from hooking up. All right. Sometimes you got to get to a place that you by your own self. Lord, I feel like you. The truth of the matter, you got to get to the place sometime where you can get by yourself so you can hear a word from God. You can afford to be distracted in this hour by your children. You can afford to be distracted in this hour by your child. Come on. Back there up. <laughs> Let me take my time because I really want to say something tonight because I understand uh, how critical it is if you miss your season. It doesn't really matter in our understanding more and more now that, that we have to be careful. Yes, sir. What we say out of our mouths. Come on, preacher. Because sometimes we open up a valley of things that we're not equipped to battle. Go ahead, son. Lord, I'm preaching pretty good. There's some things that we open the door to that we're not ready for. And I, I want to say this, and I don't know, maybe thank God is just, just giving me this piece of rhema, but you better be very careful what you say about the church. <laughs> you better be very careful what you say about the pastor. Come on, son. <laughs> I don't care what he is or he's not doing. I know he's broken English, but I don't care how messed up things are. You better keep your mouth off of these things. Ah. Be careful what you say about those praying deacons. Jesus, come on. See, the truth of the matter, people want to talk about how critical other things are going on, but their children are jacked up and locked up. Go ahead. Their cars are being repossessed. Yeah. Their marriage is on the rocks. Come on. Right.